Our processional can be found in the Green Journey Songbooks, number 620, All the Earth, number 620. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May grace and peace be with you all in the Holy Church of God. And with your spirit. Your Eminence, on behalf of the parish family of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, thank you for joining us on this wonderful day where we not only celebrate the 75th anniversary of this parish community, in a way, we're actually can date ourselves from 1795, but uh, as, as we, under the title of Immaculate Heart of Mary, we celebrate 75 years and have this wonderful once in a lifetime opportunity to dedicate our church and altar. Thank you uh, for uh, coming for this amazing ritual, for sharing the word of God with us, for sharing with us the Eucharist uh, and sharing with us uh, your leadership uh, in this Church of Washington. Sorry, I, it's it's been about six years of planning and work, so I get a, a little uh, emotional. So I'll just stop there because we've got a lot of work to do in the next few hours. <laughs> Father Marco, thank you for your gracious welcome and the opportunity to pray with the parish family of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Dear brothers and sisters, as we solemnly dedicate this house, let us humbly call upon the Lord our God to bless this water that he has created with which we are to be sprinkled as a sign of repentance and a remembrance of our baptism. May the Lord support us with his, with his grace so that docile to the spirit whom he, we have received, we may remain faithful in his church. 
O God, through whom every creature comes forth into the light of life, you accompany all people with such great love that not only do you nourish them with fatherly care, but you mercifully cleanse them of their sins with the dew of charity and constantly lead them back to Christ the head. For in your merciful plan, you establish that those who descend as sinners into the sacred waters to die with Christ should rise free from guilt and be made his members, heirs with him to an eternal reward. Sanctify therefore with your blessing this water you have created that sprinkled on us it may be a sign of the cleansing waters of salvation in which we have been washed in Christ and made the temple of your spirit. Grant that with all our brothers and sisters who will celebrate the divine mysteries in this church, we may come at last to the heavenly Jerusalem through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May God, the Father of mercies, by the grace of the Holy Spirit, cleanse us who are the temple where he dwells. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, pour out your grace upon this place and extend the gift of your help to all who call upon you. Let the power of your word and of the sacraments may strengthen here the hearts of all the faithful through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Nehemiah. Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, which consisted of men, women, and those children old enough to understand. Standing at one end of the open place that was before the water gate, he read out of the book from daybreak till midday in the presence of the men the women, and those children old enough to understand. And all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra the scribe stood on a wooden platform that had been made for the occasion. He opened the scroll so that all the people might see it, for he was standing higher up than any of the people. And as he opened it, all the people rose. Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people, their hands raised high, answered, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and prostrated themselves before the Lord, their faces to the ground. Ezra read plainly from the book of the law of God, interpreting it so that all could understand what was said. Then Nehemiah, that is His Excellency, and Ezra, the priest scribe, and the Levites who were instructing the people, said to all the people, today is holy to the Lord your God. Do not be sad and do not weep. For all the people were weeping as they heard the words of the law. He said further, go, eat rich foods and drink sweet drinks and allot portions to those who had nothing prepared for today is holy to our Lord. Do not be saddened this day, for rejoicing in the Lord must be your strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yes. 
refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the of the Lord are true, all of them just. Your words, Lord, are spirit and love. Let the words of my mouth and the thought of my heart find favor before Lectura de la Carta del Apóstol San Pablo a los Efesios Hermanos, ya no son ustedes extranjeros ni advenizos, son ciudadanos de los santos y pertenecen a la familia de Dios porque han sido edificados sobre el cimiento de los apóstoles y de los profetas, siendo Cristo Jesús la piedra angular. Sobre Cristo todo el edificio se va levantando bien estructurado para formar el templo santo del Señor. Y unidos a él, también ustedes se van incorporando al edificio por medio del Espíritu Santo para ser morada de Dios. Palabra de Dios. Te alabamos, Señor. be with you. 
and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and oxen, and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, Take these out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of scripture, Zeal for your house will consume me. At this, the Jews answered and said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered what he had said this, and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Beloved brothers and sisters in the Lord, people have built special and ornate places for worship from the earliest moments in human history. There is something to be found deep within the human heart that longs to designate a special place or a sacred location wherein to encounter the ineffable God. And for as long as people have built houses for worship and designated sites for prayer, there have been the equally passionate arguments that suggest that no fancy place of brick, glass, and stone is needed to offer God praise and to worship him. The eternal struggle continues even today between brick and mortar buildings and mystical reverence. The display of Jesus' anger at the gross business activity of the merchants in the temple is but one expression of this ancient desire to hold some places as sacred. The Immaculate Heart of Mary Parish dedicates a renovated liturgical space as a sign of the love and generosity of this vibrant community. But you also are now engaged in that same tension that has confounded the human race between buildings and sacred space. Yours is perhaps the concern that this building, as attractive as it might be for some folks, will limit the place where God is to be worshiped within this community. Some folks will say, look at this beautiful land that surrounds the building. I can talk to God in these woods and these sacred places. Do we really need a fancy house? Surely, God will be praised and is glorified in this marvelously refurbished edifice. But the building itself must also become a sacramental reminder that you yourselves 
are the church. You are the structure that is most precious to the Lord. The people of God are themselves an edifice of irreplaceable worth to the heart of God himself. Las iglesias son recordadores dodorios vivos para las personas de, de fe de la necesidad que todos tenemos de honor al Dios de toda la creación. Estas hermosas estructuras son símbolos vivientes para que el corazón humano recuerde que tenemos el deber de dar gracias y alabar al Dios que nos formó y nos formó para sí mismo. St. Paul reminded the Ephesians that they themselves were being built into the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. And so too are the people of the Immaculate Heart of Mary Parish. This building is the place where you will gather to celebrate our Catholic faith. And simultaneously, it must be a sacramental reminder of who you are as God's own temple. I am certain that people who built many of the famous Christian edifices of history did so out of a love that is reflected in the generosity of the folks here at Immaculate Heart of Mary Parish that have contributed to the renovation of this project. But their labors of love, in many cases, have become extraordinarily great symbols of faith for all the generations that have followed. Notre Dame, Santa Sofia, St. Peter's in Rome, St. Patrick's in New York, and dozens of other edifices that have taken upon themselves symbolic importance for the gr far greater than those who built them might ever have envisioned. Just to see these great structures is to recall the deep faith of the people who built them and to marvel at the beauty that they express. I am not certain just how many years or generations this newly renovated church will last. I am certain that Father Marco is now fervently praying, at least for the rest of my life. <laughs> but no matter what its length of days, I pray that it will be an obvious living reminder of the faith of this community and a beacon for all of you to recall your dignity as God's own people and your duty to praise and glorify God who has called you into his marvelous light. People build and renovate churches to serve not only as places where they gather for prayer, but to become for them a visible symbol of the dignity that they enjoy as the people that God has called his own, for so indeed you are. Father Marco at the beginning said that this was part of your 75th Jubilee festivity. And then he said, well, it goes back to 17 something or other. <laughs> so either he can't count or you don't care. <laughs> <laughs> but I do offer you my warmest best wishes and gratitude for all the work that has taken place to turn this space into something beautiful for God, because God sees you as beautiful as well.
Together, let us profess the faith that unites us. I believe in one God, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dearly beloved, let us pray to God the Almighty Father, who makes the hearts of the faithful into spiritual temples for himself. And may the supplication of the saints, our brothers and sisters, be joined with our voices. Let us kneel. Pray for us, St. John V. 
Mercifully accept our petitions, we pray, O Lord, through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, so that this building to be dedicated to your name may be a house of salvation and grace where the Christian people, gathering as one, will worship you in spirit and in truth and be built up in charity through Christ our Lord. Let us stand.
without fault, who does what is upright and speaks the truth from his heart. Beneath the altar of God, you have been placed, O saints of God, intercede for us before the Lord Jesus Christ. Whoever does not slander with his tongue, who does no wrong to a neighbor, who casts no slur on a friend, who looks with scorn on the wicked, but honors those who fear the Lord. Beneath the altar of God, you have been placed, O Lord, saints of God, intercede for us before the Lord Jesus Christ, who keeps an oath whatever the cost, who lends no money at interest, and accepts no bribes against the innocent, such a one shall never be shaken beneath the altar of God. You have been placed, O saints of God, intercede for us before the Lord Jesus. God, sanctifier and ruler of your church. It is right for us to celebrate your name in joyful proclamation. For today, your faithful people desire to dedicate to you solemnly and for all time this house of prayer, for they worship you devoutly, are instructed by the word, and are nourished by the sacraments. This house brings to light the mystery of the church, which Christ made holy by the shedding of his blood, so that he might present to her to himself as a glorious bride, a virgin resplendent with the integrity of faith, a mother made fruitful by the power of the Spirit. Holy is the church, the chosen vine of the Lord, whose branches fill the whole world, and whose tendrils, borne on the wood of the cross, reach upward to the kingdom of heaven. Blessed is the church, God's dwelling place with the human race, a holy temple built of living stones, standing upon the foundation of the apostles, with Jesus Christ, its chief cornerstone. Exalted is the church, a city set high on a mountain for all to see, resplendent to every eye with the unfading light of the Lamb and resounding with the sweet hymn of the saints. Therefore, O Lord, we beseech you, graciously pour forth from heaven your sanctifying power upon this church and upon this altar to make this forever a holy place with a table always prepared for the sacrifice of Christ. Here may the flood of divine grace overwhelm human offenses, so that your children, Father, being dead to sin, may be reborn to heavenly life. Here may your faithful gathered around the table of the altar celebrate the memorial of the Paschal mystery and be refreshed by the banquet of Christ's word and his body. Here may the joyful offering of praise resound with human voices joined to the song of angels and an unceasing prayer 
rise up to you for the salvation of the world. Here may the poor find mercy, the oppressed attain true freedom, and all people be clothed with the dignity of your children until they come exultant to the Jerusalem which is above. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. May the Lord, by his power, sanctify this altar and this house, which by our ministry we anoint, so that as visible signs they may express the mystery of Christ and the church. longing and yearning for the court of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out to the sets her young at your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Holy is the temple of the Lord, God's own are they who dwell in your house forever singing your praise blessed the people whose strength is in you whose heart is set on pilgrim ways holy is the
pass, they go through the back of valley. They make it a place of springs. The autumn rain covers it with pools. They walk with ever-growing strength. The God of gods will appear in Zion. face of your anointed. Holy is the temple of the Lord, God's own structure, God's own building. One day within your courts is better than a and elsewhere, the threshold of the house of my God, I prefer to the dwellings of the wicked. Holy is the a son, a shield. The Lord will give us his favor and glory. He will not withhold any good to those who walk without blame. O Lord of hosts, how blessed is the man who trusts in you. For you have 
have exalted over all your name and your promise. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased the strength of my soul. An angel stood by the altar of the temple, holding in his hand the golden censer. shall thank you, O Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord. How great is the glory of the Lord. An angel stood by the He looks on the lowly and the haughty he knows from afar. An angel stood by the altar of the temple, holding in his hand the
of God, you will shine with splendid light, and all the ends of the earth will pay you homage. Nations will come from afar, and bearing gifts will adore you, Lord. children, for all shall be blessed and gathered before the Lord. Your light has come. Offertory hymn can be found in the blue spiral bound Worship His Majesty books, numbers 139. Better is one day. How lovely is your dwelling place. Better is one day in your courts. Better is 
indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O oh Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. For O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Francis Xavier and St. Therese of Lisieux, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Wilton our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family who dedicate this church to you. May it be for your family a house of salvation and a place for the celebration of your heavenly sacraments. Here, may the gospel of peace resound and the sacred mysteries be celebrated so that your faithful, formed by the word of life and by divine grace on their pilgrim way through the earthly city may merit to reach the eternal Jerusalem. There, in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to sing. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Marco, Christ, peace to you. Christ, peace to you. Michael, Christ, peace to you. Christ, peace to you. Christ, peace to you. Christ, peace to you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. body of Christ the body of Christ Amen. the blood of Christ the blood of Christ Amen.
our first communion song can be found in the blue spiral bound worship his majesty books number 22 god alone number 22 Second communion song, number 11, Lord Jesus, we enthrone you.
Jesus, we enthrone you. We proclaim you are king. Standing here in the midst of us, we raise you up with our praise. And as we worship this, Our third communion hymn is number 589 in the Green Journey Songs hymnal. O God Beyond All Praising, number 589. Sing 
Let us pray. Through these holy gifts we have received, O Lord, we pray instill in our minds an increase of your truth so that we may constantly adore you in your holy temple and glory in the sight, in your sight, with all the saints, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Your Eminence, thank you once again for uh, this wonderful uh, dedication of our church and altar. Uh, it's great to have you here, to have had you here. You're at just a few more minutes. <laughs> uh, for your first visit to our parish as a parish family. You came right before the pandemic for a Catholic schools mass and it was wonderful to have you then, but this is the first time our parishioners uh, as a whole have been able uh, to share the Eucharist with you. I want to thank uh, three visiting priests, uh, two of our former pastors, Monsignor Mike Wilson and Father Jack Keneally, and our Arshasasin Vocations Director, Father Mark Ivany, who was my seminary classmate and very good friend. Uh, thank you for uh, joining us and coming with you. Father Ted had no choice, but thanks for being here. <laughs> and thank you to so many of you who made this evening possible uh, between serving at the liturgy and singing at the liturgy, reading, uh, helping organize and decorate uh, many who had a, a very direct hand in the renovation, uh, whether it was painting, stenciling, uh, woodworking, uh, so many different things that parishioners, very talented parishioners had a, a direct hand in what you see here today. Uh, and thank all of you also for your generosity in general of your time, talents, and and treasure uh, that have made this possible. Uh, we do have one parish announcement. Uh, we will be having our, what had been our annual Thanksgiving dinner, took a little pause for a few years, but it is coming back uh, on Thanksgiving day, 11.30 to two. Of course, to make that possible, it is a free dinner to anyone in the community who wants to come uh, for whatever reason. We have a, a lot of, uh, Folks here uh, who might be here for a short time with the military or a contract on the base, and a lot of others that may not have family around, uh, and also lots of families that enjoy this, uh, this dinner together as a parish family. To make that happen, we do need uh, some help in terms of volunteers preparing the food and serving it, and also donations of uh, frozen turkeys. Please see the bulletin uh, for more information about all of that. Father Marco, you've done a wonderful job, but I'm going to finish it. Your mother did so much of this artistic work. Where is Mrs. <laughs> You're not in trouble now. <laughs>
the blessing. May God, the Lord of heaven and earth, who has gathered you today for the dedication of this church, make you abound in heavenly blessings. Amen. May God, who has willed that all his scattered children be gathered in his Son, grant that you become his temple and the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May you be made thoroughly clean so that God may dwell within you and you may possess with all the saints the inheritance of eternal happiness. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. The processional hymn is number 566 in the Green Journey Songs hymnal. Holy God, we praise thy name, number 566. <laughs>
special dispensation to, to, do, uh, to do it once in a while or one on one or something like that or maybe during the pandemic when the people couldn't get around or something. But there, there will always be a bishop that does the, the confirmation. So you wait for the bishop to kiss the book and then everybody gets sick. So that's why people were, some were standing, some were sitting, some were doing the spring going back and forth.
the mic on so I can speak into it. Thank you. 